it can be anything from a little irritating to really, really aggravating when you're trying to communicate something with your words, but it's just not coming across. It's not being received the way you intended. And you know what? It's probably pretty easy to fix. A change of tone of voice, maybe a little rearrangement of the words can make all the difference. This episode of the Wife Savers podcast is the most listened to episode ever in our history. So I think that it can make all the difference for you. I hope so. Enjoy. Bags are packed. Are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road. Riding with you in the sunnier day. Welcome to the Wife Savers Podcast, where multi-award winning author and global marriage educator Ramona Zabriskie provides answers to your real wife questions. Our goal is to help you appreciate your womanhood, prioritize your personal development, and craft a powerful partnership with the man in your life. Hi, I'm Hannah Allen, and I'm proud to introduce my parents, Ramona and Dale Zabriskie. And yes, this is how they talk all the time. Let's listen. Hi, this is Dale Zabriskie, and I'm sitting across the table as usual from Ramona Zabriskie. And she has with her today something I'm really interested in seeing that every man wants. What is that? It's the (laughs) translation dictionary of what when women say something... (laughs) You get to look in Did here. Did you peek already? And know exactly what they mean. I didn't even know you knew what we were going to talk about It's today. actually an app you can get on your phone. So, <laughs> honey, here, speak into this. And then it translates what she's really <laughs> thinking. <laughs> and only you can see it, guys. It's, yes, it is the secret to the universe. Right, right here in my hands. The real definition of words when used by women. I, I Just go ahead. I really want to hear this. Okay. So. So what do you think I really mean when you say, how are you? And I say, fine. If you say fine, I think it's like, uh, yeah, it's good. Don't bug me anymore. Just don't take it any further. That's close. That's close. It often means I'm right. This argument is over. You need to (laughs) shut up. (laughs) I miss the, you're right. Fine. Okay. We are done here. Yes. Not I'm all right. I am right. I am right. Not all right, (laughs) but right. Okay. Okay. Guys got that one? Okay. Yes. So what do I mean when I say that's okay? Uh, That's a dangerous place for a guy to, to go. Right. Yeah. So if I if you say, I'm really sorry I did this or that, or uh, I wasn't home at the time that I was going to I say, oh, it's all right. That's okay. That's okay. That means it's not really okay. No, it and means... You screwed up. It means <laughs> I, I'm going to think long and hard because I'm still deciding how you're going to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll get back to you. <laughs> exactly. It's a, it's, a, it's a time buyer, okay? Mm. And how about when I say nothing when you say what's the matter and i say nothing no that means there's a lot of nothings out there that <laughs> will be discussed later it's the calm before the storm <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> something usually means there's something really yeah. really bugging at me right you go so nothing usually ends with fine that yeah. argument <laughs> <laughs> what's what's bugging you nothing you think fine i'm <laughs> right. fine and what does fine mean this yeah. little test well, doesn't mean funny. I'm all right. No, it, it means, means we are done here. Yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Nothing okay. to see. How about, uh, I'll be there in five minutes. Five. I'll be done. <laughs> five minutes. That means, that means you could have probably watched the, uh, what was it, the fourth game of the World Series here that went seven hours or whatever it was. That was you give yeah. me such a hard time about this one. Yeah. When I say, I'm almost done. I just need five yeah, more minutes. I'm almost done. When, when Ramona says, I'm almost done, it's an hour. Okay, it's an hour. So. Right, right. Well, come no, maybe half an hour. No, 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 no. 
That's, uh, that's, I'm just finishing. Okay, but that's in all fairness, if I ask you to do something, you say, oh, I'll get to it in about five minutes. It means the same thing. I never put a time on it. That's why I'm <laughs> smart, see? Yeah, I'll get to that. I'll have you to take care of that for you. Okay. When I say thanks, what mm. does it mean? It means thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take it and run with it. Yeah, that's it. Well, we're done here. Thanks for playing. Drive safely. Okay, you've heard me do this. Sigh very loudly. Yes. What does that mean? It's tolerance <laughs> yes. for me, right? <laughs> it's like, will he ever learn? Yeah, mm. exactly. All right. How about go ahead? <laughs> then that's that'll be followed up by. How did that work for you? <laughs> did that work out for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's more of a dare than, <laughs> yeah, exactly. than anything else. I'd recommend yeah. not doing it if I say, go ahead. All right. Listen, I'm giving you the secrets. I know. I'm writing notes So here. next time Write I down. say, go ahead, what yeah. are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to do something else. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I'm going to turn left instead of right. And what about, don't worry about it, I got it. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that means... Be careful. Be very, very careful. Yeah. That means something. Probably I screwed up somewhere and didn't do something. Exactly. Oh. I've asked you several times and you didn't get around to it. So now don't worry. I I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a good thing. Don't worry. You didn't. It's it's, it's pretty scary. Yeah. (laughs) It certainly sounds scary. So can you guess what we're going to talk about today? Uh, Lexicons. (laughs) Language. Language. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, so here's the question. All right. I love this listener's question. I love it because she loves us. Listen to this. Oh, yeah. I particularly, that's a hard word for me. Particularly. Particularly. Good enough. Enjoy how honest and forthcoming you are about some of yours and Dell's experiences. <laughs> forthcoming. We are pretty raw. <laughs> It makes me comforted to know that with time, patience, and some real effort that our relationship can mature. Sometimes when I respond negatively to things with my husband, I know right away that I've gone about it all wrong. I definitely don't want to handle things in an unloving way. It just seems to come out in a burst of emotions sometimes before I even know how to package it (laughs) in a more positive way. (laughs) Any suggestions? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I I think that's interesting. She, She knows she needs to express herself. She knows there's things that have to be said, but she wants to package it in a in a more positive way or more appropriate way more positive way yeah yeah so it's not you're not talking about being untruthful or being uh, manipulative by how no. you communicate no 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 it's no, no, no 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 very it means, just careful it means yes i mean who wants to talk to someone who doesn't speak pleasantly yeah, or positively totally. uh because i think a lot of people might say well I'm just going to tell him how I feel, and he can deal mm, with it. Well, then I would say, how do I'm you... I'm being congruent. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's good. Good. I've heard it all. <laughs> From <laughs> so me. So my answer is, well, how do you feel when someone is mm-hmm. negative with you? Do you feel respected? Does it make you want to please or please that person or praise that person? Uh, no, no, not particularly. Right, 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 right. So, though, I think she's really, I think she, she praised us for being honest. I think she's being very, very yeah, honest about saying, be, yeah. as soon as I say something, I'm think I know that it wasn't the best way to go about it, not the most effective way. And she's right because our spouses. In, from a wife's point of view, for sure, our husband's perception of us or of a situation may be formed based on our words, you know, the phrases that we use. So that negative perception he has of us or of a quandary or a problem or There's a situation a it, or whatever, <laughs> yeah, it's brought on by negative language. We actually are um, creating de- confusion and defeat before we even get started. Mm. When we, we're bringing something to him, we want to have a conversation. We need to have a discussion about this or whatever. And because our emotions get the best of us, our stress gets the best of us, or 
you know, we've just fallen into patterns and habits, yeah, patterns and habits of talking to each other. And he comes back at us with a negative and then. Yeah, just snowballs. You know, one thing you may plan to talk about this, but I'm going to throw it out here now because the one thing I really like about your teachings that I've used with people and just talking generally about mm -hmm. our marriage and how long we've been together and how we've yeah. learned is the difference between responding and reacting yes. and how so, responding so takes important. thought and measurement yes, as opposed it's, it's to more just, proactive yeah. instead of just, just whatever comes out from visceral the visceral thing. Right, and, right, right. And I think that is, that's just huge for people. They really grab a hold of the fact that, Oh yeah, I makes a lot of sense. So next time I'm not going to react. I'm going to think about how I should respond. It's not easy to do. No, it takes a lot of Especially if there's emotion and, at play. Yeah. yeah. But I'll thought. tell you what, it takes practice. It just, <laughs> she's like, she is obviously in a habit. She says, sometimes I respond negatively to things with my husband and I know right away I'm wrong. I don't want, I'm going about it. She just says, she, it's not that she's wrong. She's going about it. Mm. She says, mm -hmm. all wrong so we want to get out of that habit we want to create some new habits and that's going to take being proactive and that's going to be learning to respond instead of react and it's going to take practice so we'll let's get to some real concrete ways of approaching this Great. and really get to her her answer um first of all i think we have to identify what is negative because sometimes we don't even know we don't feel like we're being negative. Mm. We don't realize we're sounding negative or coming across as negative. We're just like you say, I'm just being congruent with my right, feelings. I'm right. just telling it like it is. Okay, so here's some criteria for determining whether you're being negative or not. Number one, negative language usually presents or represents an obstacle rather than a solution. Like oh. it's like a red light instead of a... Green light. In, oh, interesting. Yeah. So it has a problem associated with it instead of trying to solve something. Yeah. Okay. So here, um, I, I'm thinking of an example. You want to take the kids to Disneyland? No way we can afford that. Mm hmm. That That's the first thing. I just thing. shut it down. Yeah. Well, next, let's see. I guess we'll go to the yes. ice cream store instead. So I've, pres I, I, I've come across as red light. Mm-hmm. I have given no green light to any kind of discussion mm -hmm. right off the bat. I put the obstacle out there front and center. No way we can afford that. Right? Yeah. And absolutely. it's probably true. They really probably yeah, can't afford it. It's a great it. idea. It's a dad thing. We're going to do this. <laughs> but it comes across as so negative. Like he yeah. just shot his idea down. You don't even know what he, where he's coming from, what he's thought yet or anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to talk to you about anything after that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a non-starter right there. Here's number two. All right. So the first one was negative language presents or represents an obstacle rather than a solution. Oh, I got to tell you, just thought of one thing real quick. When I was uh, a young man and my dad, I was looking for work. And before we were married. Okay. My dad. Nice uh, to know. Was said, yeah, nice to know. I was looking for work. <laughs> I stopped looking for work when we got married, but uh, beforehand, the, uh, I walked into a place and I said, um, you don't need anybody to work here, do you? <gasps> exactly. And my dad turned me around, you know, because you're starting with this negative assumption. Yes, instead yes. Instead of saying, starting what can I do for you? Uh, and, saying, mm -hmm. and I see this a lot and I've taught my own kids and, mm -hmm. and in-law children that. Uh, that whole approach, how how you approach something makes such a difference. It, well, it, I think it's when you say, well, uh, you probably don't have this kind of situation. You probably don't know. Or you yeah. like, you're, you're, it, you think you're being humble. Oh, like, yeah. who am I to yeah. assume that you yeah. have a job for me? Yeah. You don't have any canned beans here, do you? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. You, you, know, you, can, you can turn it yeah. in and that's just a pattern I, for I, people. It does become a pattern. Yeah. So you, you, he cut that, he snipped yeah, that early bud, on, huh? Early oh, on. interesting. Cause I'm trying to think and I, you're, you're, you never talk like that. Huh? Cool. So it's something you just learned from dad. From I love my, that. Okay. Well, not didn't just learn it, but I learned it from my dad. So. <laughs> Number two, negative language amplifies obstacles that are not present. Amplifies mm -hmm. yeah, obstacles the that aren't too. even present. Okay, so how about you? Again, it's making assumptions, negative right. assumptions. So, um, I know you don't really care about this problem, but blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, you're setting it up and defining how the conversation. I don't go know that he beginning. doesn't care about the problem. 
Yeah. But right, right off the bat, I'm bringing, I'm bringing an obstacle that may not even be real. It's not even there. Or you're telling them that they don't yeah. care about the problem. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, those two are very similar, those two parts. Um, here's number three. Negative language adds a degree of blame. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, um, you you never got around to fixing that doorknob, like I asked, and now Cindy's locked in the bathroom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Instead of... We need to get Cindy out of the bathroom. Right, yeah. So now we're back to the number one. It presents yeah. an obstacle rather than a solution. And number two. But I blames. also wove yeah, in I mean, a blame. I got right, a little got knife a right. jab yeah. in there. You never got around. You never got around to fixing that bathroom. So now Cindy's locked in the bathroom. Right. Okay. Um, how about negative language actually encourages an undesirable outcome? Oh, well, how's that work? Well, okay. So like. You, you, Be, you put people in a position to act the way they're expected yeah, by what they're hearing? Yeah, okay. yeah, or or an undesirable, unhappy thing to happen. So because you were late to, oh, let me see. Because you were late to her recital, I'm sure Linda is really hurt. Mm. I set up Linda and dad to be at odds. Yeah, before, initially. I don't really know how Linda felt. I'm just mad at dad. Right. And I'm going to say, oh, now you've done it. Okay. You're late, and I'm sure she's really hurt. So I'm I'm setting up. He's and he's he probably believes me. He probably believes that I know what Linda's how Linda's going to respond. I've set them both up. Yeah, and you've set up certainly Dad here in the way that he will approach Linda. Yeah, he's colored that whole thing. Yes, yes. Going forward. Yes, you have set up an undesirable yeah. outcome. Perfect. Okay. So here's another criteria for negative language: the receiver takes the negative language personally mm -hmm. and stops listening. Mm -hmm. So the, and what do you, when you stop listening, what do you do? You get defensive. Yeah, very much so. You start so, uh, formulating your rebuttal. Your rebuttal. You react. Right. Right. So when people stop listening to each other, they're only concentrating on, like you say, on the rebuttal, on defending themselves. So what's gone out the window? Yeah. Any, any type hope. of... Collaboration, yeah. yep. creativity, cooperation. It's yeah, I ain't going to throw happen. it out the window. What was that song about <laughs> throwing it out the window? <laughs> Viol violets? No. Uh, sweet violets? No, that's uh, I don't know where you go. Throw it out the window. But that's what you do. You, you're throwing it out the window. Cre collaboration, creativity, cooperation. Yep. Yep. As soon as you start blaming and being negative in any way people just stop listening whoever your spouse is going to stop listening get right. defensive so that that in and of itself is enough reason to avoid negativity yeah because, because you, 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 just, you you have no connection now. yeah you've right. uh, ambushed the rest of the time everything you want going forward yeah. yeah okay so here's number six um once we've once they've stopped listening and got defensive and nobody's caring about <laughs> making this work anymore. Now you've laid the grounds for conflict, mm -hmm. right? For Or for deepening of an existing conflict. Yeah, because often these things are, like you say, this takes practice because you've generally, most people have to overcome a habit yes. that they've already gotten into. Yes. And that just And a perception of each other they've right. gotten into. And like you always do this. You always right. answer that. You never right. do this. Right. And so you can deepen that existing yeah. perception, that existing conflict um, by your negative language. You've, whenever people stop listening, you, you're one inch away from conflict. Mm. If the negative language is not so much offensive, because there's two different kinds here. You can have offensive negative language or you could have just pessimistic. Mm -hmm. Just pessimistic we all know the is pessimistic negative. Pessimistic people yes. in our lives. And that brings out negative everything too, right? So a person who's pessimistic, as as I'm the speaker and I'm being negative, I'm being pessimistic, pessimistic. What that means is I am not really motivated to take any real action to get out of this situation that's causing me to feel so pessimistic right. or so unhappy, whatever the problem is. If I'm being pessimistic, I'm not really motivated to find a solution, not really motivated to get out of it, right? And, and it's, that, it's so easy that to influences just... the listener or the, my spouse 
to be just as inactive. Right. Exactly. It. It. it uh, um, it's a whole idea in business that they talk to you a lot about. Don't be the guy or the gal in the office that talks about the problems. Be the guy, or the gal in the office that talks ah, about the solutions. Yes. You know, but that's to true bring it up to office. your boss and say, well, you know, this is a, happening over here. Or Susie did this over there. Mm-hmm. Say, mm-hmm. here's a situation. What if we did mm-hmm. this? Or how if we went forward like mm-hmm. that? So if you take that, like you say, in just an mm-hmm. office situation, mm-hmm. imagine how it is with you mm-hmm. have yeah. you Ooh, know, a family. So true, if that's true in an office. Yeah. How true is it in a marriage, in, a, in family life? So here's a, a pessimistic statement. must be like... Um, your family's mad at me again. They'll never accept me. Yeah, that's a no total solution de- in there. Right. Is there. It's a denial. It's a defeatist attitude. Yes, defeatist. Yeah, never going to succeed. Yes, 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 yes. Hmm. You know what? I, it just makes me think of my mom and dad's gravy story. Oh, yes. Well, your mom and dad's gravy, your mom's gravy is uh, legendary. Let's just put it that way. Tell the story. I've heard you tell it before. Well, like, it, uh, like every Thanksgiving, I think you tell the gravy story. <laughs> the gravy is served. <laughs> we have Thanksgiving coming up. <laughs> well, now, now, see, I'm going down a limb here because if I start telling the story and I don't get it right, are you I, gonna, I will not be negative. And, I promise. Okay. I will not be negative. <laughs> That's not what happened. You were there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't remember it, but you, you just tell it so well. So go ahead. Well, as I understand it. Yeah. Okay. That's my disclaimer. Uh, Early on in Ramona's parents' marriage, uh, her mother wanted to impress her father with a nice meal. And so she had uh, all the fixings out there and whatever, you know, meat they had, she decided she was going to make gravy to go with it. It was probably a meatloaf. It was more likely a (laughs) meatloaf, some ground something and a ground critter of some kind. And so she presents the the meal and she's very anxious about uh, having her new husband accept her offering. Oh, uh, right? yeah, yeah. And so uh, he's eaten away and uh, she says, you know, well, how is it, honey? <laughs> and he promptly says, well, the, the gravy's a little salty. And that was his first reply yes. in... Uh, we really don't know what came after <laughs> as far as It wasn't gravy. But it wasn't gravy. <laughs> because I don't think uh, Ramona's dad had gravy for 52 years. <laughs> never had gravy said. again. That's what he said. He never <laughs> got gravy right. again. And maybe that's a good thing uh, for him. But, you know, it's uh, it's all about it's how you It's a good lesson. It. That's right. It's a good lesson. I mean, it's, it's a little salty. It's a little silly but it, it, <laughs> but the point is she wasn't motivated and right. to do anything more none of us are when people are negative with us we right. don't want to please them and i i've been bad at this uh and you've tried to help me here we go being honest yeah yeah no it's uh you know we've we've talked a lot about and you you teach a lot about guys are wanting to solve problems and get things done and you mm-hmm. you present something to me or you um, mm. you've done something, you've created maybe a new uh, document, new email you want to send out to your listeners or whatever, and you put it before me. And uh, You go straight to the problem. I go to the problem. I go right to the problem. I say, well, you know, you got an extra space here or you got to uh, <laughs> phrase it this way or, or whatever. Yeah. And I can't it, do that. It kind of bursts my bubble. Yeah, I have to tell you how wonderful it is first. And then you can show me the extra space. Right, or right, right, right. And, and I'm not that I... Uh, we're teasing. It's always something much more than an extra space. But. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's three spaces. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a, it's a matter of, uh, it's not that I'm not being honest by mm. saying, I like it. You know, uh-huh. uh, how's the gravy, <laughs> Just honey? Just the this way is, I like this it. This is right. This is what you, this is your version of how's the gravy, honey, or how's the meal? And I'm I'm not saying, oh, well, the gravy's all salty. There are extra spaces in there. It's, man, this is really good. I love the way that the top of for hand this over here is yeah, just Yeah, you're really looking nice. for the positive. And it's all true. Mm-hmm. It's just, what do you lead with, right? And what so for me, lead with? it's for me, I just want to say, you know, I know it's wonderful. You write wonderful stuff. I've been telling you, you've write wonderful stuff for Why should for I have years. to tell you again? Why do I have to tell you again? But I, but that space is going to drive me absolutely me crazy. And, and right, that's I love what you said. It's what you lead with. Yeah, it's all about what you lead. We're going to break now for just a minute so I can invite you to my free live masterclass, Understanding Your Husband and Sons. 
In my work with women in over 70 countries, I found that most of us, when it comes to our husbands and sons, think like Carol in Kenya. I was expecting him to think like me, behave like me. Or Dana in Utah. Shouldn't we just be the same and shouldn't we just agree? Or Anne in California. I grew up in a culture where there was a lot of eye rolling and sighing about guys. And that's too bad because when we act or react based on false expectations, we end up feeling like Catherine. I didn't feel I could relate to him because I didn't understand him. Or getting riled up like Carol. Made me mad. I was crazy. I was, uh, it was frustrating, you know? And acting like Anne. I used to think he should know what I wanted without me having to ask. Which just erodes our relationships and blows up our dreams. So that's why I created Understanding Your Husband and Sons a super fun, eye-popping deep dive into his brain, body, and emotional makeup. Women have been coming from all over the world and coming away from our time together with an exhilarating sense of hope and power because now women like Amber, Anne, Dana, and Allison understand. How to communicate my needs. You know, how to be clear about it. How not to be run around, how not to manipulate. The way I communicate with him isn't any more aggressive or threatening to him. I can see why he's reacting or why he's responding that way. That's helped to avoid a lot of the hurt feelings that I used to have. So if like Jeannie in Canada, you're thinking, okay, I need to reboot how I think about marriage and men and how they're loved. Please join me at this free live masterclass, Understanding Your Husband and Sons. I'll teach you things you have never heard before and that you won't hear anywhere else. Science and strategies that will knock your socks off and make all the difference in your relationships. And it just changes everything about how I see him. There's this huge potential that I was not really tapping into because I didn't fully understand it. We're both so much happier now. And in how you see yourself. My confidence as a woman has skyrocketed. We've made it so easy. Just go to wifesavers.org slash masterclass and choose a day and time. I'll meet you there and even answer your questions live. Because like Carol in Kenya or Cindy in Argentina, you'll want to be able to say, Oh, we're wired differently. And that's the beauty of life. And it set me free. It, it allowed me to say, okay, I understand now. And I loved him more than ever. Wifesavers.org slash masterclass. When I watch uh, couples interact or listen to women relate to me, their conversations with their husband that they're frustrated with, I sometimes I feel it seems to me that we can default to thinking of our spouse like like they're a punching bag and that they're just going to pop right back up. Oh, the little clown that when like, you hit pops back if up. I can, if I can't be honest with my, yeah, you know, right. my Who, partner, this person that is. Who can I be honest yeah, with? Yeah, and, right. and they'll pop back up. So mm. punch, well, it'll be okay. They'll get back up. Mm. And, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about, those mm -hmm. old clowns yeah, i right. remember that the sand, sand in the, the, yeah, bottom. Sand the bottom right yeah. right but they're they'll just no, they can take it and it's the opposite mm. they can't take it they're the most sensitive of all people in the world to your comments and your negativity and, and if that's your approach then everything is going to be dumped on this person that's going to be the go-to place that's true that's when people say i'm just your punching bag that's what over they and mean. over and over mm -hmm. again yeah, and that gets old real fast. A person's stress and frustrations are taken out. Yeah. You know, we were just at your brother's house, and he had a punching bag hanging in the yeah, garage, yeah. and his wife sends him out there to take out his frustrations. <laughs> and once, and I ask you, do you want a punching bag? And <laughs> what did you say? Did you say you want one? No. You don't want a punching bag. I don't know. I don't have room for a punching. <laughs> You'd I, rather have the garage for cars. Yeah, that's you want to work on your cars. I yeah. think I might hurt myself if I had a punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> if I need another surgery, I'll, I'll go there and go. Oh, my word. But as women, if we're using know, our husband. I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> if, you're, if you're thinking of your husband like a punching bag, you start sending messages that go downhill. 
women are women um can are, can actually be taking their marriage the opposite way of what they want unity and love towards alienation so that they're pushing their husband further and further away by sending messages that say things like this yeah. you ready here's yeah. okay. here's how it goes you're not meeting my needs the way i thought you would mm. Yeah, I had plans, I had great plans, and this, these, this isn't You're it. You're not meeting my needs. Or then it, that progresses to, I want you to be more the way I think you should be. Yeah. It's all now, you're not that. saying this. It's, it's the message. buried in your negativity. Yeah, it's a message right. that is heard. And then it increases, yes, it's what he feels. Yeah. And then it increases to, I'm disappointed that you're not meeting my expectations. Mm-hmm. So now we get more and more frustration, more and more disappointment expressed to, I want to respect you, but I don't trust you. Because you haven't met your needs in the past. Yes, right. And so you start questioning everything, Mm -hmm. everything about him, everything. You know, you're always undermining or second guessing whatever he says, including the decisions he makes, whatever. And then we progress to, I cannot support you. Mm. Mm. To you will never succeed. Oh, now we're way, yeah. way down the road. And but we've all seen couples like this. To I do not need you, and I can act without you. Yeah, you've you had your chance. You've blown yes, it. This is a waste yes, of my time. Yes. yes. Yeah. So my only point bringing that up, is, and we have a very specific um, paradigm that we learn in Wife Savers uh, in that whole curriculum that shows you how this happens, and how to avoid it. It's key. It's really important to understand. But my only point is it all starts with little, a little negative message. Like, you're not meeting my needs the way I thought you you would, and that I think you should. And and a guy is just like, when when a guy hears that, he's like, "Uh, uh, I... No, yes. I, no idea and where to go with that. that's part of what we learn is how it's received by him, yeah. how he translates that. We won't go into that right now. It's too sure. much. But the point is negativity takes us down that road. And I know that's what our listener is saying. That's why she asked the question. Mm-hmm. She can feel that it's, yeah, it's taking not, it's her marriage right. the wrong direction. Yeah. Okay. So we don't want to push him away. We want love. We want connection. We want progress. We want to get the doorknob fixed. We want to get Cindy out of the bathroom. We want to make sure Linda and dad are happy, even though he came late to the concert and everybody forgives and loves and, you know, and we want, that's what we want. So we want to go to Disneyland. That's it. That's right. I just want like to get in the bathroom. Cindy said they're way too long. So we don't all want the hot to water's push. gone by the time I get in there too. We just need the doorknob fixed. Yeah. But the way we approached it, yeah, probably not going to happen. All right. But although we do need to get Cindy bigger deal. out of the bathroom. That's right. All right. So rather than break down that bathroom door like a SWAT team, That's right. or what I'm saying is, you know. We want to get into his heart. We want him to want to do these things with us. We want to be together as a family. We want all that that we want. We can go in the back. We can go in the front door and break it down, you know, with the, uh, you know, machine gun kind of approach. Or we can come in the back door. And that's what I'm talking about. It's not being manipulative. It's being gentle. It's being respectful. It's being positive. All right. Now, in order to become more positive... This is what she's asking us. Suggestions for how do I approach, package these things more positively. I want to make a little disclaimer. This, I'm not, I do not want to come across as giving simple answers to deep ingrained ways of patterns of yeah, communicating. Yeah, they've been going on for a long because time. Because usually what's required are some real paradigm shifts. We have to wrap our heads around. We may even need to replace all the chemistry in our brains, you know, we just have to see things in a completely different way in order to get rid of that habit of coming across as impatient and negative. So here's some of the shifts that have to happen that we're not surprised can't happen in a 30, 40 minute podcast, but we have to come to understand him as a man and as an individual so that we're coming at him from a place a bit more empathy, just a little bit more compassion. I think that's huge because I know, you know, things things we talked about here just right now, I put on, you know, 
my uh, impressions, my expectations of how you should act or react to something yeah. is based on what I'm thinking of. And and one of the big things you've really helped a lot of women do, and and, and men too, and, and and certainly in our relationship, is look at things from a different perspective and understand mm-hmm. where it's coming from. Understand the yes. source. And if you start to understand how a guy thinks yeah. uh, or a gal thinks, yeah. generally speaking, yeah. it just is a great beginning for being able to approach it it's, differently. For most of my students, it's really revolutionary. Mm-hmm. And I, I just got an email the other day that said, I feel myself softening up. Mm. I thought that was a yeah. really interesting yeah. way of putting it. Um, we have to, so that's one thing. We okay. also need to learn the language of respect when expressing our needs or asking for help and support. I, I say language of respect. I really probably should, you know, trademark that or something because it really is a peculiar way of approaching things that's very lifesavers. Well, I know you talk a lot about first respect. Yes. You know, and yeah. that's a that's a tough concept for yes. some people. Learning, yes. right? right? Because respect you need to respect me. Ma- yes. you, I'm not going to respect you until you, you respect, respect me. me. Oh, and you're turning that that's around. That's another whole podcast. That's huge. why I'm saying it's this these major mind yeah. shifts that are something of an earthquake for some of us. Um, we also here's another paradigm shift. We also have to believe in taking care of ourselves and filling our own tank. We've talked about this in maybe every podcast episode to (laughs) some degree or another. The reason that's so important is so that we're not coming at him from a deficit, a place of where we feel like we're drowning Mm -hmm. or the place or a place where we feel so desperate, you know, like, um, like the story of my great grandfather who was on this sinking ship in 1857 yeah. true yeah. story you know and and when you read some of the stories from the survivors of that the worst maritime peacetime disaster in american history they're harrowing and some of those stories include that passengers were who once they were in the sea as the ship went down were clinging to other passengers and pulling, pulling them, down them down right. with them right. so that they're both you know, have no chance of survival. It's really scary. So you don't want to come, you don't want to be that partner in your marriage. Mm-hmm. You want to come at, come at any conversation as much as possible. <laughs> so it's not possible all the time, but as often as possible from a place of security and fullness and so mm-hmm. forth. And that only happens. A g- generosity is only going to happen. Proactivity, responsiveness instead yeah, of reactiveness action, right. is only going to come from a place of, you know, feeling Confidence strong and, in yeah, your own yeah, self. All right. Totally. Um, and we have to learn to manage conflict. That's another Ooh. whole skill set. How to manage conflict optimally because there's going to be conflict. It, yeah, it's constant. I mean, uh, it's not it's necessarily constant, absolutely. but it's often. So the yeah. most peaceful way, the most productive way so that we protect the relationship when unavoidable, you know. So the idea of conflict doesn't define the relationship. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It's just something Listen. that happens. It's not who we are. But for oh. some people, it becomes yeah, it, the norm. It, it's true. Oh, yeah. I hadn't thought about it. It becomes the defining characteristic yeah. Yeah. of their relationship. People around them can hardly stand to be around them right. because of that. And you and I have conflict every day, multiple times Yeah, a day. we do. Yeah. But as I say in my book, it's more like, a, you know, if a conflict is seen as an earthquake, a natural disaster that's going to happen. Um, our conflicts turn out more like little, you know, rattle a teacup instead of yeah. split yeah. up, even if that. Yeah. 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 Split little things. Right. We, I can't even remember what we've no, been in conflict about it's today, but I'm sure we have. to do with grapes. I think. <laughs> really important stuff. Tuna grapes? Fish. Really <laughs> yeah, what did we for lunch? For lunch yeah. <laughs> we couldn't agree on it. <laughs> all right. So those are all paradigm shifts that really need to happen, especially in marriages where this is an entrenched way of negative interaction. But we're going to, right now, just for today, is today this, only. Is this the test? <laughs> I didn't, they didn't tell me it'd be a test. Really, really cheap. Oh. It's really free. We're going to do a skill set. We'll Ro- practice a skill set. We got a role easy. play? Do we have to role play? Well, you don't like role playing? Well, it's... Okay. Oh you, okay, listen, you don't have to do it. No, it's fine. I'll, I'll play both parts. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't tell me there'd be I a test. I love playing all the parts. Nobody told me. Okay, that's right. 
<laughs> get some different hats for Listen, you to this wear. Is just, get the... These are easy ways of turning a negative into a positive. Okay. And that positive twist is just going to leave a better impression and lessen the confusion and the conflict, right? Okay, so we want to do it. I hope we've set this up like, yes, please, I want to be more positive. Okay, here we go. Instead of, we can't do that. So remember the Disney trick? Right, right. We can't, how about, that might be a problem, but here's some, here's an idea. What if we tried this? Mm. This just goes back to what you were saying about in the office place. Yeah, right. Presenting a solution right. rather than the exactly. obstacle. So how about... Um, yeah, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure we'd be able to pull that off, but what were you thinking? Yeah. So yeah. how do we do that with the Disney trip? Well, yeah. So the Disney is... Uh, she said, no way we can afford yeah. that trip. Um, well, I mean, you know, the whole the whole thing about Disney is excitement, right? It's yeah. the happiest place yeah. on earth. Yeah. And what a wonderful idea. It would be <laughs> great for us to go to Disney. In about 20 years. <laughs> how, yeah. How, how, how do you, as a, to, to avoid, you know, filling up our credit cards and, yes. and all this thing, how would yeah. you propose that we do this? That's it. Yes. You know? Oh, I, A plus. Oh, you brought up the problem, okay. which right. is the credit cards. Right. Yeah, that she doesn't want to go yeah. to credit. She, I mean, the debt. She, she feels like they really shouldn't do that and they can't afford it. But she said, "Well, what? How else could we approach mm -hmm. this?" So, like, what if she said, um, "Using using the visa for that Disney vacation, that could delay buying the car that we've been talking about. What if we took the kids to the beach for a few days instead?" Or just the whole idea of being willing to discuss things instead yeah. of like we've talked about earlier, just clamping down, yeah. shutting down, red light, over, <laughs> next, yeah, with that lexicon thing. Yeah, but see, she, uh, yeah, she she reminded him of what the issue is and mm -hmm. reminded him of something else that they want, which is the car. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. That's that's the first one. Instead of we can't do that, how about? That might be a problem, but here's what, but what could, you know, here's an idea. What if we did this? Right. Okay. Number two, instead of it will never work, how about let's look at alternatives? Mm -hmm. So here I present a solution about the Disney trip. You know, I said, well, what if we went to the beach for a few days? But she doesn't even have to present a solution. She can just say, what do you think? What you have, do you have other ideas? What other things could we do? Well, one of the things that you and I have talked about a lot is the, idea of talking to the big dog, you know, yeah. where I say, you know, just tell me what the problem, I'm the guy, just, what, yes. what is it? You yes. know, just tell me what it is. Yeah, I love so, talking to the big dog. as opposed to, you know, dancing around and finally getting to mm -hmm. the thing. I just want to know, tell me what yes. I need to think about. Straight right? to the center of the earth. And so here, if you turn, if you kind of turn that around the other way, to say something like, it'll never work, is yes. talking to the big dog in a negative sense yes. instead of saying, you know, the guy's got, you know, the scenario, let's go back to our Disney example. This guy's probably got spreadsheets at the yin yang <laughs> about how to make this happen, right? And figured it all out. She never gave him a chance. Right. Yeah. And, and you present the idea of talking to the big dog. I want to go to Disney. We're going to go to Disney in ah, February or whatever. And, he didn't and there's give all this the stuff backstory. behind it. Right. There's all yeah. this backstory, but he's presenting it this way instead ah. of... Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying that he should have s s pulled out the spreadsheets necessarily. It might have helped her, but yeah. But if she responds or rebuts yes. that same, <laughs> you got to be kidding. As opposed to, honey, you must have been thinking about this for yeah, how and planning. How do you yeah. propose that we can do this? I'm yeah, interested yeah, yeah, to yeah, know yeah, how yeah. that might work. In the example, Amen. Example of the. Um, family being upset with her and she's like they're yeah. never going to accept me what about i'm concerned that your family's upset with me here's some ideas about how to approach your mom and uh here's the support that i'd appreciate from you yeah that's a tough one for a guy to be in too if you've got it's, the in-law or the outlaws it's a common problem unfortunately. Uh, right it is but and to put him in the middle he's is, not mr relationships yeah. necessarily and it's very confusing <laughs> yeah. to a guy of like 
who do who do I prioritize? It's very clear to a woman, very clear. <laughs> but she's but presenting to him. It, it's really yeah, intimidating. Yeah, and she's presenting this in your example as a very proactive. I've been thinking yeah, about this. Here's, I'm concerned your family's upset with me. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. Here's some ideas or an approach that I think might be helpful, and I'd really appreciate it if you could, you know, follow through this couple of things the next yeah. time this happens, whatever. Okay. Um, and then. Or here's, or how about, um, like, I'm concerned your family's upset with this. Do you have any ideas about why it's happening and what we could do about it? Mm. See, that, now I'm, I, this is what I'm saying, number two. Just open it up. Right. And try to get some positive solution brainstorming going on between the two of you. Now, besides um, rephrasing like that, besides, um, you know, saying things from a more positive angle... Another super effective thing that I am a champion of, I know our daughter Hannah uses this very effectively. and She teaches about it all the time, which is questions. Mm. Can't, how, Respond with questions? No, well, yeah. Just, just well, more questions into you Questions the can help make your spouse aware of problems or potential problems and see if they can come up with those solutions mm. themselves or better solutions. So a lot of women will go up the Richter scale when their husband comes and says, I, I, I want to start my own business. Yeah. Right. You know, and we're, you're like, ah! yeah, we're moving to the Azores. Yes, yeah. yes. And instead of shutting it down. And being negative and pointing out all the th- wrong things again, all the obstacles, all the red lights, um, asking questions like, well, let's go back to the Disney trip. Um, well, have you thought about how we'll get a new car if we spend $3,000 on that Disney trip? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you've pointed out that there is an issue here. We got a problem, but I didn't just zero in on and put a period at the end. I put a question mark Mm -hmm. at the end. Have you thought about how we're going to get that our new car if we spend $3,000 on our Disney trip? As long as you don't add, you idiot, at the end of that. uh, (laughs) So it's it's all about the delivery, too. As long as you don't do a loud sigh at the end. (laughs) (sighs) Never Uh, mind, I'll take care of it myself. Exactly. Or here, remember the recital that we, you know, he was late for Linda's recital. I, I know you wanted to be at the recital from the start. The other night, and and it's too bad it didn't work out that way. What do you think would be fun for you, Lynn Linda, to do this week to make up for it? Mm-hmm. She'd love to have a daddy daughter date. What could yeah. you guys do? Right. So instead of coming down on him like boom, it's hey, I I you know I think um, yeah I think it would I would... help. Linda may have been a little disappointed. It would yeah. really help if you went on daddy daughter. What could you do? I like the assumption here in in the way that she's, uh, in this example, approaching the guy to say, to assume that he feels bad about it and that, yes. you know, he's worried yes. about it. And not You're like, assuming the best about it. Right, assuming the best yeah. instead of, oh, man, I didn't have to go to that yes. recital. That's yes. a good thing. You yes. know, that's not where okay. his head is. This is dad. so key. I'm so glad you brought that up because it's something that I really, really love to preach. And that is assuming his heart is in the right place. Right. You don't have to agree with him all the time. He's going to make big mistakes but a a nice guy a well-intentioned guy you're so much better served in that relationship if you'll just assume generally speaking that his heart at least is in the right place he was uh, yes he stayed too long at work yes he got caught in traffic because of it yes he got to the recital gate late yes maybe he should have left there earlier but you don't know what everything else he was facing that afternoon let's just assume that his heart was in the right place he's trying to finish the day he's trying to you know do what he needed to accomplish whatever it was at work please the boss whatever and please you and get to the recital and make sure Linda knows she was important to him and 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 his yeah. heart was in the right place one thing that we've talked a lot about is we make up stories. Ah, uh, you right? tell that to me all the time when yeah, I you, start spinning out of control. You, you really say you're sometimes. making up stories. You just something happens or somebody says something and then it's just it's spinning out of control mm-hmm. is perfect. And I think that's the other thing here, right? You mm-hmm. make up stories. The other thing that my dad taught taught me when I was young. Since <laughs> I love it's, these. Uh, it's my dad time me. for uh, the two things my dad taught me. We're getting them both in on this. He probably taught you a lot more than that. But this is the two things that <laughs> the two in. things that I listen to. <laughs> Uh, my dad told me is never react to the first information you get oh. about a situation because it's either going to be a totally wrong or b it will definitely be 
colored. It will not be. Oh, it'll be incomplete. It'll be rose colored or or what other color? You're not. Of some you don't kind. have all the pieces. Don't have all the pieces. First, don't piece react. Of when, and he was really good at that. When he'd hear something, he'd just kind of look at you and nod his head and and think more about to it. come. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So. Yeah, so good. Don't react to the first bit of information. And the other one was talk to the big dog. <laughs> it was, uh, I can't remember. You taught me. Oh, no, it was, I was going to say no. gravy. Always say that's just the way I like it. No, no that was my dad. That was my dad. <laughs> it was, yeah. You don't want somebody to work here, do you? Don't leave that with a negative. That was it. <laughs> Oh, blessed dads. All right. So to sort of summarize all of this, we want to be direct. We want to be clear. We want to be succinct. We want to sans the emotion, if at all possible. You know, just speak clearly, directly. And then, and we want to try and judge, hopefully. All of that, direct, clear, succinct, get rid of over-emotion, judging, hopefully. What have we done? In each one of these examples, really, what we've really done to turn a negative to a positive is replace an obstacle with a solution, mm -hmm. a defeat with a victory, blame with credit. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And destruction with construction. Mm. That's all we've really done. And I say that's all we've done, really done. It didn't take very much to do it. What it took was just a little thought. I haven't really compromised my real intent. I want to let him know that I'm concerned about the credit card and Disney. I I do need his help in figuring out how to deal with the family that I think is upset with me. I do want to make sure that he and Linda are going to be on. Oh, they're going to be okay with each other because of the recital and all of that. I, 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 that is my intent and I haven't compromised it by just giving a little time, a little thought, a little proactivity, as you said, how am I going to approach this in a more positive light? I've restructured my language in such a way as to draw out not only the best outcome, but the best in him. Mm. And the best like for moving forward. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So I, I, I put every I put all the pieces in place to get the best possible outcome, yeah. and I've and like you said, uh, you you said I like that you assume that he really does feel bad about this or really does want to help because now I've brought out the best in him. We do it with our kids, you know. We're really good at we try to be good at being positive with mm -hmm. our kids. We should, mm -hmm. we should be positive with our spouses. It's it's the most important relationship in our life. Yeah, we tend to life. cut our kids some slack more than we cut our spouses yes. some slack. <laughs> yes. and we're all just kids. But the kids. point is we're all just growing up. <laughs> we're, just, just, we're all just growing up. We're just kids with cooler toys. Is, is what we're <laughs> so true, so true. Well, anyway, I hope that helps our listener to be... Um, Feeling a little more excited that she's going to face a few fewer of those moments where she's like, right. ah, darn, why did I say right. it that way? And I am not going to never, ever do things never negatively. Not, <laughs> not never, ever again. <laughs> so, Ramona, the talk around town is about some sort of master class that you've got going. <laughs> Is that what I'm hearing on the yeah. underground? And I know you don't like the part of about the emotional underbelly. Yeah, that kind of feels like I'm getting ripped open like a fish. <laughs> well, right? You kind of are, My but it really opens women's eyes, and I think they're going to love it. All they have to do is go to wisesavers.org slash masterclass. Home is with you wherever that may be.